Big day ahead, guys. The day of the fight. How are we feeling? Yeah. Probably the best I've felt in a few days. Um, I won't have any excuses. It hasn't been an ideal camp. I've been laid up with heavy cold. Um, yeah. How are you feel, feeling, Ryan? Yeah, not too bad. Absolutely on top of the world, to be honest with you. I had an illness, didn't I? For about yeah. four or five days, I was really bad, rough, being sick. And I've got over that. I've had loads of food, all good food. Energy wise, I feel like I'm raring right to go now. How much weight have you lost? From what go, I've lost 18 kilo. From today, I've just weighed. And um, I've actually, well, we've obviously fighting as an heavyweight, feel replenished anyway now. So I'm not like I'm cutting any weight, I'm eating what I want. Yeah. But good. Probably be close to pushing cruiser away. Probably get you down to cruiser if we meant it. Maybe but in another six week camp. It's all in a good cause. Yeah. But I just can't help the fact that I feel so buzzing, mate, honestly. You ain't been in there for seven, seven years. years. Um, yeah, me now, yeah, feel good. 114.2 kilos at my heaviest when I started. I initially tried to get a date in December, but my body just wouldn't get right. <coughs> the bloke that called on the competition one didn't want to do it. So we had to have Christmas off. So, and I made 102.5. I'm scared to weigh now. You've been Breathing. looking well though. I'm scared, to, I'm scared, scared to weigh. Yeah. Oh, hold on, who's that? The next heavyweight the champion next heavyweight. of the weight? Yeah, looks like I'm so scared to weigh now, so I've been resting up for a few days. I've been eating good food, but not massive amounts, just You're the proper food. Right, good food so um, I had this weak chest, immune system was low. I needed a rest, I really needed a rest. I've been sleeping afternoon and my eight hours for the last four or five days. I think it was telling me something. You're hold and you need a rest. But now I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Just come back from a nice gentle walk, come back from church and just saying prayers from a good Lord all this fight. Let's get safe out there. And that's all that matters. And we have a good night. There's no idiots being able outside the ring. There'll be plenty of people in there to nip them in the butt of they are. But it should be a good night. But like, you know, like driving to holiday, you have to pray that you get there safely, example. You know, so let the angel of the good Lord and We'll just see what happens later. Ah, let's go! We're going to do the business. Tell us how it sounds. Please
How satisfying did it and does it feel to be the IBA heavyweight masters champion? It was very satisfying. I felt like a king for a day. I absolutely loved it and I still love it. I've been around with friends, family, showing off the belt like I was the heavyweight champion of the world for a while. Loved it and loving it. And how much pressure was on you before the fight? Yeah, lots of pressure on me before the fight. Um, you know, back room nerves, um, dressing room nerves is something that all fighters go through. And I'm an experienced fighter, but 10 years out for two fights, and then another seven years out. Yeah, I was feeling it, you know, family name, reputation, everything's at stake, really. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was under pressure when I come out, I was the young fighter. And it's one of the best buzzes I'd ever had because every man and his dog uh, was cheering for me. So I was under a lot of pressure, but yeah, naturally. So how do you think you performed? Yeah, I was happy with it. I think I performed well. You know, when I evaluated it over my career, um, I was just thinking a couple of days ago, I've had about 30 facial and head stitches due to fighting. I've broken this hand due to fighting, broken this hand due to fighting. I've um, had two elbow operations, which have partly been contributed to fighting. I've been a boy fighting professional boxers in knuckle fights. I've toughed it out. I've been hit by other travellers by big keeper rings on when you ain't see the punches coming. Toughed it out. I've turned up the next day with stitches after the night before fighting. And I look at all that. I've been punched hard in sparring. I look hard at all of that and I've evaluated it. What's the point in having all these knocks and bruises? Yeah and go through all this pain if you don't learn anything. And I knew that Jimmy Prattle was a tough, hard man. I've seen other professionals try and take him out, ex-pros and pros, and, and it didn't do very good. So I have one, one thing clear then, to go out, um, not to have a war, I've had enough of them, go out and fight, use my skills, use my speed. Timmy's a tough man, box clever, was my first port of call. If I had to go to a second plan, I resorted to it, but I didn't have to. Um, plan one was fine and dandy. Um, I just wanted to prove to Timmy I respected him, that I was old, I wasn't cold, so I worked on my speed, and I think that may have surprised him that I was still fast and sharp. So I, I went in with a mission and a plan, and I achieved it. You know, it, it, I took a couple of nice punches to the jaw and a nice punch to the body, but my I, I, because I've prepared well, you know, I've always had good punch resistance and nothing changed. So, analysis of my performance, I'm happy with it, absolutely. Yep. Uh, can you describe how you felt during the fight? Felt just cruising in gear two. You know, I've had so many, I think I've said this before, I've had so many fights where, you know, um, I've had tough fights historically from the knuckle days and all that. And, um, but in there, in my box, I, I just felt I really didn't put any age, no emphasis, no nothing on me. I just felt like I was cruising. I felt like I controlled. Um, I took a couple of nice punches to the jaw, which really satisfies me. Um, they didn't move me. It was one of the questions I needed to ask, was my punch resistance still good? Um, and that question was quickly answered. And um, they just give me more confidence. And, um, you know, I felt confident and good in there. Yeah, they're really good. Good. And what was it like having legends like Jimmy Stockings in your corner and Johnny Franklin presenting you with the belt, the old gypsy champion? Oh, yeah. It was, 
fantastic, you know, having having Jimmy in there, I mean, I mean Jimmy knows me well, he, he knows he knows some of my fighting credentials, he knows most of my fighting credentials, he, he's, he's refereed me in the knuckle fights and everything and seen me do stuff, so he knows me well, but, you know, he's a legendary fighter, people like my grandfather, Jack Daly, um, you know, legendary fighter, all our family, all the, the Smith stops, you know, you, you carry that reputation and um, to go in there, Jimmy in the corner. But you know, it's great to have him in there and, and the performing delivered and to get the belt from arguably one of the best gypsy fighters ever, but one of the nicest gypsy men ever. It was, it was very, very satisfying, very, very satisfying. A moment that'll live with me forever. Loved it. Uh, you said before that you would never fight again. Would you fight again after this time? If not, why not? Well, um, there's stuff that you don't see behind the scenes. People retire for a reason. Um, if I was to evaluate my performance, I'd go, yeah, well, seven years out of the ring, I'll be sharper with that, I'll get better. And, um, yeah, I'll be off and out there. And that would be naturally so. You know, I will get sharp and I will get better and I would find more ring time. But there's a reason why we retire. And... Um, but I, I, did, I said not before, and I'll say not again, but with what's going on in the crazy modern world of, you know, if it was a life-changing fight, then where I could go away and camp and have my own mature and um, on, on a sort of every other day basis, and we, we were away in camp like some of the champions do, if, if it warranted something like that, then arguably maybe, um, and I wouldn't say I'd never hit a ring again. I may, but, but really, plan is now, yes, it's completely gone. Um, I went out on a fantastic high note, very satisfied. But maybe ex some exhibition boxing, maybe, and purely exhibition, you know, stipulated that this is you know, not a serious fight and, you know, to, to tap around and raise money. Maybe something like that, but um, no plans. No plans, and there's a reason for that. How long and how hard was the road to a comeback? I think that's a good question because that's the very reason. Um, had you been a fly in the wall, I started 114 that's how hard it is. kilos and I said to all my fans on YouTube yeah. out there and with people that follow and support with me, I'm a man to my word and I said I want to make my fight weight. And um, I started six months. Preparation, okay, I was aiming for a three month fight in December, it didn't happen, fell through, and I wouldn't have been ready in time anyway. But um, how wild was it? If you were a fly on the wall, it would have been intriguing. The amount of pain on a daily basis my body had to go through, and that sense where retirement comes from. It really, really was a painful camp. My diet, um, I've always said it, and I always say it, I'm a fat type of heavy weight, but to see the transformation of my body to lose some 12 kilo and the hard work in pain. But you know, constantly my body would be aching, constantly, six days a week. My wife would vouch for my diet, yeah. Um, it was funny, it, the, the, the hilarious funny side of it was, I'm coming back um, with my boys in, in, um, in the vehicle, coming back from, from um, Dell Youth Boxing Gym, and uh, we're doing a bit of work up there, yeah. And I'm coming back and I'm dressed, dressed like my grandfather and I've got my, son Joe uh, Junior next to me and um, I start laughing, he said, why are you laughing? I said, well, I'm knocking around with you lads in the gym, you know, you whippersnappers, and I'm dressed like my grandfather and my dad used to dress and I found it hilarious, so it was quite funny. But it was a very, very painful road, very, very disciplined road and it's for that reason I, I pat myself on the back. Look, if people think I did okay, fine, right? If they didn't, their opinion is fine as well. But I'm actually very, very happy with myself to beat my old body into some sort of shape. But it was a tough road question, very, very tough. Good. And where do you go from here? Where do I go from here? Well, um, uh, the, the comeback was semi-motivated through me getting unfit, which is unlike me. I'm completely unfit. Um, that will not happen again until something goes wrong in my life. Um, so nicely ticking over in the gym in a mediocre 50-50. I learned some great new, we never, we never stopped learning, learned some great new training techniques to keep my heart rate and fitness up. Um, 
So mediocre training, just which is working out regular. I'll accept I'm gonna go up seven, eight kilos naturally, that I'll be happy with. So sitting in the middle there, but my son Joe Jr., my son Rhino boxed in the same show, had a couple of good first rounds, slowed up a bit, lost the last round, but won the fight against a, a good fighter. He'll be back on the unlicensed scene, no doubt, um, I'm sure. Um, but my son Joe Jr. has aspirations of um, going through the amateur ranks and um, and, and uh, then becoming a professional. He's showing very good signs, so well, lots, lots of work with him. Um, I've been given freedom to help out in the gym when I'm there with him training. They said, come along and help out the boys, which is non-pressured, very satisfying. So where do I go from here? I'm the next golf pro. I love my golf, I'm competing. And helping out the boys, so lots to do. And um, actually, it don't end there because um, the IBA president, Alan Mortlock, um, said that the show that he attended, yeah, um, it was one of the best shows he'd been to, and he, he does 20 shows a year, and he said, do me a favor, come back and be the West London promoter again. Do it with me. He said, he's starving out there, and I've had about 10 fighters come up to approach me already. So they want to fight in the show, that's how the atmosphere was. And along with that, um, obviously there were some professionals, semi-professionals you call them, getting their wages, and people had to be paid of course and whatnot. But um, with the help of a crowd and all that, we raised 11,000 pound for my mate Charlie. Of course he owned fighters, fighters like myself, and they're taking no purses and stuff like that. But we made 11,000 pound, 10,700 and something, and 300 more to come from Alan Mortlock and a slight overpayment. But anyway, layman terms, about 11 grand. So, great show. Going to be working with Alan in, in the um, promoting stuff as well, yeah. So, lots. Really good, really good future. I'm going to chuck this question in there. How have you been celebrating? Have you made the most of it? Oh, yeah, yeah, loved it. Um, I was just uh, into my golf club the next day. Um, stayed partying that night. Because, you know, I have a really, really strict camp when I go into... I'd like to add... But I work so hard, you know, I, I, I'm a, people call it semi-professional, people call it unlicensed, people say, I call it the paid range, we fight with no shirts on, and I prepared like a professional, I prepared really, really hard, and I, my performance, um, uh, you know, you, you show through in that, but um, yes, I've partly hard, so my diet was so strict, there's a moral, the, 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 the moral of the, uh, the answer to the question is, yeah, I partied so hard, and, and last weekend we went up self end. About twenty of my mates got together. The kids was getting about out. We were messing around. I was like a schoolboy. I loved it. Must have done twenty pints of beer. Loved it. Yeah, bang on. Good. And a final message to the fans that's been following you on this journey. Well, thank you all for following me, and um, I hope I delivered. I said I would. Um, I'm sure there was times when people may, may have thought behind the scenes, uh, you know, went a bit quiet. Um, you know, with my channel's gone a bit quiet, but I delivered. Is the evidence? Is the fight? Um, am I Jack Johnson, Lennox Lewis? No, I'm not. But it is what it is. That, that was me. That's what you got. And um, message to the fans. Yeah, thanks for supporting me. Um, love to you all. Good luck to you all. And my channel will be um, back off and running with much more. You know, we have good plans, some good stuff coming, some, some good interesting boxing angles, and yeah, so keep watching the space. Yeah, so I can fully accept um, to all my fans out there that I am not the best Gypsy champion, that I fully accept. But I'm told I am now the oldest, approaching almost 52 years of age. So somebody's got to go some. Yeah, I'm going to leave it to you to overtake my aging journey. Champion, almost 52. I'm happy.